Hello, my name is Chris Roberts. Welcome to The Long Road. I'm here with my guest. Your name? Ruth Sterling. <laughs> and so, the big thing, the pumpkin fest. And um, this is going to be the 21st year? Correct. And you're new, new at it? Sort of. Oh, should I give more than a one-word answer? It would help. Uh, yes. Uh, Nancy Sporborg, who created the Pumpkin Festival, was a very, very dear friend of mine 20 years ago and still is today. And uh, so I helped with miscellaneous things. And then after the first um, few years, second year maybe, I started doing the graphics and the logo for downtown and things. But I, I was right there with uh, helping in the very first one, the Harvest Festival with 600 pumpkins. When you just talked about the graphics and, and the logo, yes. This weekend, because we have the Art Walk, the Art Fest in Keene, went by the Lane Hotel. You saw that? And I saw um, Keene Pumpkin Fest 2011. Wonderful. And it, it was really good, and it was really attractive. That's the new um, 2011 art that will be on T-shirts and merchandise. Glad you like it. It was. It just stood right out. It's um, that was done by the <laughs> illustrator that works with with my company and uh, did you notice that the skyline of Keene is in there with the bandstand yeah. and the, sol the um, statue? We love it. It was inspired by something that um, we originally <coughs> purchased but we customized every little part of it so it would be unique to us just like the festival <laughs> is unique to us. And I don't think people realize the importance of the Pumpkin Fest or how it gets out uh, around the country. Yes, I don't think we do either, because I know I sure didn't. I mean, I knew it was popular, and I knew that it was sort of a curiosity. All or, you, know, you know, you'd go somewhere far away and mention Keene, New Hampshire, and then say, have you ever heard of our pumpkin festival? And people would say, yes, or I've always wanted to go to that, or my nephew went to Keene State because he heard about mm -hmm. that. Or, you know, it, it comes up a lot anecdotally. But it is, um, it has put us on the map in a really big way. Alex Bates, that's the manager of the Marriott, um, says that people in England know about the um, Keene Pumpkin Festival. If you Google Pumpkin <laughs> Festival online, there's pumpkin festivals all, all over. over the place. But ours is, I think it might be the best known. There's one um, in the middle of the country with the, the pie company. Um, Morton Pies? Mor is it Morton? I think there's Morton Pie, there's also Morton Salt Company, I'm not sure. Uh, I forget the name of the pie company. Fortunately, <coughs> I'm not representing them. But they have a wonderful festival in September that draws about the same number of people, but it's nowhere near as, I mean, and you know what the difference is, is those towers and carved jack-o'-lanterns, which each one is an individual work of art. That's why I was really glad that we were able to um, be part of the art walk is because I have always thought of this as an art event. It's so inspiring, creatively inspiring, that it really is um, a visual art event. Because last year when we, we had the TV show and we were talking yeah, to people. I saw you. And um, we had a couple of people from New York and Connecticut that says the only reason they come to Keene is for the pumpkin festival. They plan their vacation for the pumpkin festival. Can you believe it? We had people from Wisconsin and Minnesota, and they said the same thing. And when you look at the cost of gas and stuff, and people are saying, this is my vacation, this is what I plan on, and coming to Keene. It's there. You, you know, the joy and the magic of the festival is there if you come to find it. One, one thing I wonder about those people is if they brought a pumpkin, because we have this new um, soft rule where we're strongly encouraging people to uh, bring a pumpkin, that it's a full participation festival, and that means you don't come and look at Keene, New Hampshire's carved pumpkins. You bring one of your own, and there are those really <laughs> tiny ones that you, know, you could bring from Wisconsin, or you could pick one up at a farm stand along the way, but we'd like, you know, the joke is don't come to Keene, New Hampshire on October 22nd without your pumpkin. Well, Without but, your carved pumpkin. But you were still se people were still selling pumpkins last year for people to yeah, carve. Yeah, and I'd love to have those sales <laughs> continue. And when we talk uh, about sales, one of the things about the Keen Pumpkin Fest, it's not really a commercial. Mm -hmm. When you look at all the volunteers using it to fundraise, mm -hmm. the Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, schools, it, it's really a community event. And I think a lot of these... Nonprofits wouldn't really be able to survive, but definitely not at the level without the Pumpkin Fest. The stories are wonderful about what the nonprofits who sell food 
I mean, they have a function. There's people that need to be fed that come to yeah. our pumpkin festival, and um, the restaurants are, um, I'm hoping the restaurants are all going to do a um, whopping business that day and serve their mm. wonderful food, but also um, the 40 to 50 nonprofit vendors that are offering fair food, and in some cases, <laughs> some healthy food this year. We're kind of proud of that. Um, they're providing a real function. There's hungry people. There's a joke that um, after Pumpkin Festival weekend, there isn't a shred of food in the city of Keene because we've been wiped out. And um, so if our region can um, make money while doing, while giving people an experience that they remember and come back for year after year, that, I mean, that's capitalism at its, at its best, but it's also... Um, the wonderful stories of people. I, here's mm -hmm. here's one that just I just learned recently, is the Girl Scout troop that sells fried pickles. I have never had a fried pickle. <laughs> I had one the other day. It, I was up at the state house and go, oh, fried pickles. I was like, but it was pretty good. People say they're wonderful. They're good. Sherry Hughes in the Sentinel said that you know fried My pickles, pickles. They're good. Delectable. Well, I don't know. I'll try <laughs> one. But but I do love this Girl Scout troop. I I've never <laughs> met them, but they were the first people to sign up to be part of Pumpkin Festival 2011, and they sell fried pickles. And with their fried pickle proceeds, <laughs> they go on a camping mm -hmm. trip to the state of Maine with the Girl Scout troop that they couldn't do without the money that they make that day. I'm not sure of their sales, but the nonprofit vendor sales are between three and $6,000. Even if, you're, if you have a really bad day, you might make $2,000 in one day. Well, if a Boy Scout troop can make $2,000 in one day, there's just not too many other ways to do that in one day. So um, I, I say here, here. They're, you know, it's, they're learning about service, they're learning about customer service and um, interacting in the adult world, and they're, you know, serving our guests so that they leave here happy with a great feeling about Keene, New Hampshire. <laughs> and one it's of the... It's all good. It's, it's a festival. Yes. It's got the kettle corn, it has the Polish sausage, it has the French fries. Yes, all the restaurants up and down are, are jam-packed, but that... It, that carnival fair experience where you can eat eat that junk food for at least one. Yeah, yeah. Doug Mealy, um, who's been a um, he was on Center Stage's board. He's been involved with the festival the whole twenty one years. He says people want that food, yeah. and if we don't offer it to them, they're it's you know they want it that one want. day because. Uh, I have a son who's really into health food. Oh my, and yep. organic food, and you know, all good, all healthy, all the time. And he's actually developed some recipes with pumpkin and things mm. that are really tasty. And pumpkin seeds. Yeah. He takes pumpkin <laughs> seeds, butter, and mm. maple syrup, and bakes them, and they are they're you know a, a gourmet treat. But anyway, so, so we've been striving toward the healthy options, asking people to consider burritos with. Yeah. Um, vegetables and things and people have incorporated some of that but we know the demand is there for fried dough. Doug Neely <laughs> and his Interact kids have sold six thousand dollars worth of fried dough in previous years. Somebody wants that stuff. Yeah. Fried dough, cotton candy and kettle corn. You're, you, those are good for you? <laughs> yeah. But those are lines uh, yeah. from the open to close. You're going to have lines in all those three. I heard the pickle people have quite a line too. I'll find out this year. Yeah. <laughs> We're trying to manage the, um, <clears throat> the new food court idea. Okay, so all of those lines used to interrupt yep. the flow, flow of people looking at the pumpkins. And by taking them, just like in a mall, by taking yep. the food Oop. court and moving it to a separate area and making it all about food so that it, you go there when you're hungry yep. and you stay there till you're not hungry <laughs> anymore. And there's... Um, we're working on places to picnic. Like there hasn't been a place to sit down at the Pumpkin Festival mm -hmm. in previous years, where you know you sit on the yep. curb and eat your bratwurst or whatever, and now now you'll be able to sit at a little picnic table, and, or um, probably not a picnic table, but a table <laughs> and a chair. Picnic tables are too heavy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, so, and the other thing about the food court is there'll be a beautiful mm -hmm. tower right there, right along Gilbo and. Um, the restrooms, that's a fancy word for porta toys, <laughs> yeah. will be right in that um, little alcove behind the um, Port Authority restaurant. And then the craft fair will be across the street. So that'll be sort of a hub of activity. As, and when you're ready to view pumpkins and Keene's beautiful Main Street, which is what the festival was originally founded to have people experience, mm -hmm. Keene's beautiful downtown, then you're, you can go out there and hopefully it'll be more... Um, 
friendly and less intimidating to seniors and uh, handicapped people and, and just all of us uh, with little kids and things that will just be easier to traverse the downtown. I, I'm picturing it going really well. <laughs> and you talk about the, the craft fair. And <clears throat> when you talk about traffic being blocked, a lot of people don't even know about the, the, the craft fair because they don't have the opportunity to pull off because of the way it is. So when you're talking about the food court now, it's going to make it a heck of a lot easier for them to see other things. However, we do not get complaints <laughs> from the crafters. They, they've been lining up. The first people I heard for, from when we first raised our hands and said we wanted to um, take on the running of the festival were the craft vendors. They evidently <laughs> Ha there's one fellow that's been coming for years. It's a fudge vendor. He has <laughs> two booths. The first year he came, it was downpour, pouring, mm. pouring rain. He's more than, he's, he's done mm. really well every time he's come, and he's ready to come again. So I think maybe that craft fair does better than we think. It's um, a third full as, as mm. we speak. And the um, food vendors, we're almost half. We have almost half the vendors we can accommodate. So without any... We're keeping kind of a low profile until uh, we really have all, <laughs> everything squared away and get that stamp of city approval that says it's full steam ahead. Well, two things. The first thing is the weather. Yeah. You have any control with the, the <laughs> weather? <laughs> We've had some pretty bad, um, some rainy and damp over the last couple of years. You remember <laughs> things like that? You know, if you look at the numbers, I think there's only been three mm. really rainy festivals mm. in all the years because Center Stage yep. kept a record that's in the program. Mm. And I pull that out every now and then and say, okay, three out of 21. I like those odds. odds. I'm okay with those odds. But, yeah, it's, <coughs> you do not know. Yeah. If you want a sure 100% thing, you don't want to be you in the pumpkin, pumpkin festival, festival business. Although a rained out pumpkin festival is still a good day in Keene, New Hampshire because the pumpkins still look fabulous. And it, it's still inspiring and wonderful. And, and also, you know, overcoming adversity and accomplishing the impossible, those are themes of this festival yeah. from the get-go. I mean, Nancy Sporborg, she, when she wanted to put pumpkins on towers, she got the no, no, no. <laughs> Were you on the city council then? No, I've only been on for three years. Oh, because uh, she <laughs> went over the fire chief's head to the city council to to even get to build the towers. It's been a a fight from the beginning against all odds. So what's a little rain, Chris? Come on. Yeah. I mean, snow, those hail balls <laughs> last week, I don't know what that would do. <laughs> when you talk about the, uh, <clears throat> well, I'd rather have hail than tornadoes like yes, that in Massachusetts. right. That would be a mm -hmm. real showstopper. The, um, the city council. Yes. And we love the city council. Yeah. And part of one of the things is because of the way the economy is and, and shrinking, there's going to be a lot less money for, the, the city's going to provide a lot less money for the Pumpkin Fest than it's done in the past. And so how are you doing to help make up some of that shortage? Some people were heartbroken that the original $45,000 that was in the city mm -hmm. budget didn't stay in mm -hmm. through all of the budget process. And it was a hit, and it was, um, you know, it took our breath mm -hmm. away for a minute, but it didn't take long to realize that there's still $25,000 in the budget which is a huge um, vote of confidence by the city of Keene, the management of the city of Keene, and the, the um, leadership of the city, that that they still know that they're getting more than their money's worth back for twenty five thousand yeah. um, dollars. That's a significant investment, and I know that um, that they had to fight to keep that in. And I am thrilled because you know what I can say. I today I can say that the city of Keene is w one of the top two donors to the Pumpkin Festival, even after cutting the budget. Now, they're also um, the major um, cost of the festival. It's $106,000 now. I thought it was one hundred and five. dollars uh, And last year, I think it ended up shaking out at like 80000 So I'm hoping that we're going to run such a tight mm. ship that the estimate is going mm. to be um, way over. But we're going to work to raise... To, we're going to work to the budget that uh, accounts Better for be safe. $106,000 to the city of Keene for all they do for um, public works and police and emergency response and all of the help that they have to bring <coughs> in for police. Uh, a lot of overtime and vehicles and things from the 
state police and other towns. And I keep telling Gam Gary Lamro <laughs> this, that as far as I'm concerned, if he keeps that festival safe, I can keep it fun. <laughs> And I've put my whole reputation, my whole company on the line to run this festival. I don't want anything <laughs> bad to happen. I want him to keep it safe. So he's my best ally that I can just relax. He's got it all well in hand. And as long as we come up with 1,100 feet of barriers to block all the roads, <laughs> as long as we do that within the next two weeks, we, we're all set. <laughs> Gary's a great fire chief. He's, he's a great person. He, he's proactive. Oh, I've seen other ones where they say, no, 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 prove it, but he just seems to look at ways to get things done. He told me from the get-go there will be pumpkins. If, <laughs> if we work, if we do our work, there will be pumpkins, and I just hold on to that, that we're going to, where, wherever that bar goes, you know, if he needs 1,100 mm -hmm. barriers, we're going to jump that bar, because he knows what he's doing. He's, yep. a, he's a sharp fire <laughs> chief. I'm, I'm saluting him. One of the things that um, we've had, you know, working with the city council, there's a few people It says, yeah, the city shouldn't um, be paying any money. We should be getting money from restaurants and hotels and other ones because they make out. So <clears throat> there are other hotels and other businesses that are actually helping you out this year. Yes, you know that because you <laughs> secured yourself. It, you secured <coughs> us a $7,500 gift, but it turned into a $10,000 gift from the um, Best Western and uh, Days Inn management. And um, we haven't actually signed the papers on that, but he's assured me, he and his manager, Jim mm. Narkowitz. I uh, couldn't even pronounce yeah, it. Yeah, I, I don't know why I tried. <laughs> but uh, yes, that, that they are big fans of the festival. And uh, all of the businesses that benefit from the festival I'm hoping that we will find some way to have them express their, um, the, their acknowledgement of the benefit. I don't believe that all of the establishments that do well that day can afford to make a do yes. major donation to the Pumpkin Festival. I think that that huge day goes into their year-long bottom yep. line and that they're, they're doing okay. But uh, if an establishment is doing okay, okay. I don't see them <laughs> writing a $1,000 check. No. If an establishment is doing way okay, <laughs> like there's one restaurant downtown that rumor has it makes over $40,000 in one day. Mm. And um, Ted from Ted's Shoe and Sport is um, on our team and he's working with me to try to get, um, we have a budget, we're hoping for $10,000 from those people who mm. do benefit mm. and are willing to acknowledge that they benefit. And we're going to ask them to, sh to share, you know, sort of profit share because we bring them 70,000 people and they have a great day and please could they help us bring them $70,000, have 70,000 yep. people because we need the help. Yep. We have to raise $260,000 and so far we have the um, 25 from the city of Keene, a, a wonderful philanthropic donation mm. from the Putnam Foundation for 20000 that was specifically to renew the festival, to bring it out as a um, renewed healthful, uh, wholesome art uh, event, you know. Um, they, they, they love the festival. They love the good parts mm. of the festival. And then um, the Marriott, Alex mm. Bates, um, has pledged a, a lead gift of $25,000. So that's 20, 50, 70, and then the- 57,000, um, 10, that's 80,000 already. Yeah. And uh, CNS Wholesale Grocers were the very first pledge they pledged a five, made a uh, major corporate gift of five thousand dollars before I mean, last fall. They said that 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 they're in, that they support it, and they want to see some improvements. Everybody yeah. is looking to see if we can. Uh, actually, the uh, person from CNS said she wanted to see if we could turn the Queen Mary. I think, <laughs> but um, we're you know the, I see it as turning the Queen Mary. I, it it's a Queen Mary, and it. Mm. That's, you know, the big, big, big ship. <coughs> and if it turns ever so slightly, you could tra you could get around it nicer. We, you know, just improve some of these things. Well, I've been on the Queen Mary. It's now in Long Beach <laughs> when I lived in California and Irvine, right next to the aquarium. It's a big boat. <laughs> it's a big boat, about 1,000 feet, a little bit more than 1,000 feet long. Yeah. <coughs> but one of the things when we were talking about last year, Pumpkin Fest was really unlike any other Pumpkin Fest because we had some problems. And <clears throat> I live in the district, 
part of it where right. most of the problems were. I live on, on Grove Street. And this was the, last year was the first time I saw smash pumpkins up and down the road or even downtown because all the other times the, the kids and all your volunteers, they come up, they help pick up the pumpkins and the next day it's almost like there was nothing there. So what are you doing to address maybe some of the concerns that people in the um, southern part of Keene would have? Well, I'm worried about <coughs> them and um, determined that they won't wake up next October 23rd mm -hmm. and feel that way because I that's just not what it's all about. I don't want mm -hmm. that to happen and and I don't believe that um, an alcohol induced misbehavior should mm -hmm. kill the pumpkin festival. I think alcohol induced misbehavior should be addressed 365 days a year and I know that there are a lot of people working on that and, and feel the same way but uh, there are so many ways to um, that I, I'm caring mm -hmm. about this problem. But I think that the best one that, it, that since time is short, which we are um, pulling together a task team, mm -hmm. task force mm -hmm. is probably what it'll task be called, force, yeah. of um, people who want to see the 18 to 25 year old <coughs> age bracket um, healthfully involved in the pumpkin festival. And we, we went to the student assembly at Keene State and talked to the um, student leadership mm. and uh, got a couple of people who have signed up to help mm. and a couple of interns. Another person came forward last week, also a high school intern. So the team will probably be six to eight people, an alumni, a parent of an active student. There are kids <laughs> at student assembly said that this fellow that he was actually the president of a student assembly said his mother comes to Keene State College once a year not to help him move in, not to help him move out, but for the pumpkin festival. She loves it. And so there's, there's a lot of constituencies that care about the festival and don't want it to be, um, you know, a smashing, a smashing bash, <laughs> smash bash. And I'm certainly one of them, but I also have a 25-year-old and a 22-year-old offspring, and I know that that age group is, um, there's a party mentality in that age group that um, we just, uh, as parents, we just hope that kids will out, outgrow it. Yeah, outlive it so that they can go on to be responsible adults. I have a take, though, because I'm, I'm an old hardcore jock <laughs> a sports person, and I believe that we told people it was the last festival. And when it's the last game yeah. in the season, you tear down the goalpost. I, I remember as a basketball player watching <coughs> them rip off the, the net hoop all, thing. Yeah. Jeez, um, we could use that down at Keys Field. You know, we don't have one of those. And it's like a time of destruction. And I think that's what we saw. We told them, this is it. Done. You'll never see another one. And I think it brought out the last um, last person standing kind of thing and I think that was a mistake and I saw it coming that's why I tried to say no no we're here Sterling Design and Communications came out in September to say it is not the last one over our dead bodies is this the last one we'll find a way and that's what we said where there's a will there's a way and I, I don't believe that, that the 18 to 25 year olds have known how much impact they have I don't believe they know that they've drowned out and killed the festival I mean it is dead and gone in some people's minds, yeah. and uh, we we're resurrecting it year 21, but it's kind of a new, it's kind of like a phoenix. It's coming mm. back from the ashes, and I don't believe the kids know that. I don't. I think if you look a 19-year-old mm. in the eye and say, "Do you know that what you did last year killed your pumpkin festival?" They would not mm. want it to die. They they just it's sort of like they did not know how bad their uh, impact you, that when they spilled out into Winchester Street and upset our mayor and and all the city yep. they weren't they were not aware of how much trouble that caused and I happen to believe in Keene State College my intern that's with me today and uh, the intern I had all year Keene State at its best super bright super smart super committed to the pumpkin festival wonderful wonderful young people <laughs> And if we could convince them to not end up at the ER and not end up arrested, we'd have a fabulous festival. Those are really the two, th yep. uh, you know, and maybe not smashing. <laughs> I hate smashed yep. pumpkins, but. <laughs> the, um, but on the other hand, the pumpkin fest got blamed for things.
that happened every Thursday night on the Grove Street, the Willow Court. Right. And you'll see mobs of students going up and down, drinking, bringing 24 and 30 suitcases of beer. And <clears throat> because they didn't get drunk because of the pumpkin fest, they got drunk because they usually get drunk and the pumpkin fest just happened to be there at the same time that they were drunk. Plus the numbers were up. The numbers were up. <clears throat> but yes, you're right. We have a problem all year Correct. round in Keene. The, um, we have an alcohol issue and I, I would personally like to use the pumpkin festival to shine a spotlight on that issue and to get neighborhoods working together <laughs> because there are ways to affect this problem. Can we cure over drinking? <laughs> well, probably, I mean, no one has yet, but uh, I, I don't want to surrender to it either. I want to hit it every mm. way we can, whether it's um, having people pledge to not end up in the ER that mm. weekend or, um, you know, I heard this interesting thing that the Greek organization at Keene State has not had, did, had no mm. arrests last year. Mm. They have some way to work within the system and stay safe. And so if the fraternities can do it, um, I want to kind of bottle, oh, that's a bad pun, but I want to, <laughs> yeah. I want to learn from everyone we can learn from to keep it safe, keep it fun, and keep it going. Well, <clears throat> yeah, because the, if you're a Greek and you go get drunk or you end up in the ER, you run the risk of getting thrown out of the organization. Is that the? So there's a, a risk reward. Well, let's. <clears throat> we need to create a, a risk reward maybe if King State College helps because King State College, there's a risk reward. If you get caught drunk or underage drinking on college, there's a penalty to pay. Maybe we work you together. You know how else they could help? I'm hoping that some of these things will come out of this task team that we're pulling together this summer and they're gonna come back and make recommendations. Uh, one of the things they just suggested, an individual that they haven't even met yet, but um, is to have a speaker come and talk about um, you know, the, what happens when it goes wrong you know it can be fun 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 <laughs> and all of a sudden go wrong and uh, they do that at other colleges have speakers but um, there's a rule at the dormitories at Keene State and I might get this wrong but each student is allowed to have three visitors overnight so if you have two <laughs> students they can each have three visitors and if you have three <laughs> students you have nine people in a room and they're coming from other sure. colleges where they're not answering to anybody to Right, they're the lawless, <clears throat> and I think that those kids are um, a problem. I'd like to um, get that rule changed, even if it's just for the weekend, that out-of-town guests have to be limited. N nine people, who could control nine people in a room mm. in a dorm? I mean, you know, even... a few beers, and yeah. You're, yeah, you're 18, 19 years old, and you're trying to impress or outdo the other person. It's just Asking a, for trouble. It's just asking for trouble. So, and you know, if you have to do something as declare a holiday, a campus holiday, like um, St. Patrick's Day used to be, kids used to be at mm. Keene State during St. Patrick's Day and the spring break shifted so that they go home on St. Patrick's Day and take the problem to some other town for the day. If we have to do that to save Pumpkin Festival, I see it as a, a better measure than, you know, losing the festival to alcohol-induced misbehavior. <laughs> I, you know, if something, if, if the pumpkin festival has to die, I don't want it to die because of alcohol abuse. That's just wrong. And before we get on to something more positive, <clears throat> I remember bringing my grandkids back. You have grandkids? Yeah, I got grandkids. Holy cow. <clears throat> you're bringing the grandkids back, and then we're walking behind four college girls. Oh. And one, were they and behaving I, themselves? They were, but there was one she was gone, and it's kind of burnt in back because I had three daughters. And she goes, oh, I got so wasted last night. I got drunk. I passed up. I woke up in this house. I didn't even know who it was. So I got up and left. And she was joking. And I'm, and I'm trying to go, do you know how serious what you just said? So many things that have could, could have happened. Right. And she I'm, does not know. She does not know. And what she's given up is complete control, control. over her <clears throat> destiny. And supposedly the one thing we all really, really, really want is control over mm -hmm. our own lives. Like, um, <clears throat> this was told to me by a person at the hospital who's working on the um, Healthiest Community mm -hmm. Initiative yep. that that one thing that uh, kids 
One thing you can use to help kids understand um, that abuse of alcohol is not a cool thing is that those very same kids, what they want is to feel in control of their lives. And what you do when you have, when you get, as my daughter would call it, shwasted, <laughs> shwasted is you give up all the control over your life. You put yourself at the mercy of... And you don't know who. And, and then... You know, we wonder what's wrong in the world today. I say stay, you know, keep your head. Yeah. I have this little ad campaign we've um, been tossing about that says don't lose your head. Mm -hmm. you, you know, stop one inch short of losing your head, and we can still have a pumpkin festival. But that's good advice yeah. for everyone is to always, you know, keep yourself safe and not arrested <laughs> and not at the ER. Yeah. And, you know, I, I mean... I thought I was a lot of fun in high school and college. The drinking age was 18 when I, and, and I've never been in the ER or arrested. I've got to think you can have a lot of fun, fun. short of that. Yeah. And that's what I want to challenge 18 to 25 year olds to do, is to have a ton of fun and, and stop short of losing your head and getting arrested. You know, just yeah. a teeny bit of self-control. And now on to the deposit. Yeah. The, <coughs> excuse me, the, the amount of kids that go to the pumpkin fest, the parade of costumes. Yeah, 2,000. And it, it's just one of those events. There, there aren't too many kids' events around. And somehow the pumpkin fest has been able to keep it family-oriented. You have to. It has to be family-friendly. <coughs> if it's family-friendly, it'll be safe for everyone, and it'll still be fun for everyone. So <coughs> that is a, uh, that's the term I keep in my head, is family-friendly. But the costume parade is a whole other art form. You know, that's, it's pretty fun to watch that. I was over at the um, Strolling of the Heifers <laughs> this weekend, you know, 15 yep. miles away. And uh, there's a lot of people that go to that. It's very, very popular. And their traffic control system to keep that mm -hmm. safe isn't 1,100 feet mm -hmm. of barricades and barriers. It's two orange cones. <laughs> you know, there's – it's all yep. – <laughs> It's a whole different, uh, we, we have some very high standards for our pumpkin festival. And we pull it off because we're the community that can do anything we put our minds to. <laughs> I the, think. Yeah. <clears throat> the other part is parking. Oh, yeah. And there's always a question about parking. And so where do people park? Where are you planning on having them park this year? The parking system is one of the main uh, revenue generators. It's about $30,000 in revenues have, having um, out-of-towners park in the satellite parking and take a bus in. And the, um, the bus company is signed up again for a student. They, their, their fee went up a little. It's, you know, everything's expensive. Yeah. But uh, we would like to have people do that. The bus system has been, uh, last year was a pretty mm -hmm. good streamlined system. You don't wait long and you get back to your car. And that's the ideal thing. That's what the emergency response people <laughs> in, in Keene really want you to do if you're from out of town is to take a shuttle bus in. Um, but besides that, legally parking is very, <laughs> very important. <laughs> And illegally parking, the reason that that is really bad is safety. safety. That if there's an emergency in an area and the um, streets are blocked with illegally parked cars, that, you know, that could turn into a catastrophe really fast. And as I said, we're very, very cautious under Gary Lamoureux's mm -hmm. lead. And um, so the best thing to do for parking is to score a parking place and take <laughs> a like quarter mile, half mile walk in but um, there are a lot of uh, nonprofit groups making a lot of money right. on their parking lot that day. Savings Bank of Walpole. Savings Bank of Walpole, yes. $3,000 the Samaritans raised that day. And I like to see that mm. continue. I hope Gary Lamro is mm. not watching this show because those, <laughs> the, the more cars that come <laughs> into Center City, the harder it is mm. to manage. So if you want to really make everybody happy, park and ride. <laughs> The Walpole does it pretty good. They, they, they don't block traffic. They do it really good. Oh, good. Are you a Samaritan? <coughs> no, oh. but they're right behind. When I walk out the front door, there's oh. a bank. Oh, <coughs> right, right. Well, You're the neighbor, right? Yeah. The, um, the other one, the big one, dogs. Yeah, dogs. There's no dogs allowed in <laughs> Brattleboro either at the strolling of the heifers, and people bring their dogs. dogs. I think people think they're being nice to their dog, bringing it to an outdoor event, but what they're really doing is traumatizing Pleasure. their dog. 70,000 people and, you know, there's no water and it's, you, ju you just don't want to bring your dog. And the other thing I don't want you to do is to smoke. 
Because yeah. um, until last year, mm. we've never tried to prohibit mm. smoking. And uh, if it, it's got, you, mm. you don't want to smoke on Main Street during the Pumpkin Festival. That's not family friendly no. either. But don't bring Fido. It's, <laughs> it's just not fair to Fido. Well, one thing about smoking, the gentleman has moved his office, his business from center of Keene down to West Street. Oh, yeah. So we don't was have... Was smoking right <coughs> there with the... Oh, yeah, there God. Was, you had all the people buying their cigars, chilling and just smoking their cigars and in front of everybody. That's, so Yeah, that's, so not, that, that's not, going, going, but not in the spirit of the yeah, festival. So he's still making his money at, at the other place. <laughs> so we got about 30 seconds, and Thank I want to appreciate... Thank you for inviting me. No problem at all. So you're a fan of the Pumpkin Festival. I'm a fan of the Pumpkin Festival. You and 14 other city councilors. <laughs> and so you're still collecting donations from anybody. Yes, we need, we need help. Pumpkinfestival2011.org has information. $5, $10, it all counts. Actually, yes. And, um, you know, $10,000, $20,000 helps <laughs> also. But, yeah. You okay? Thank you. Well, thank you for being here. And I'm Chris Roberts, and I'll see you on the long road. Thank you.